Somebody say, praise the Lord. I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about uh, what Brother Cliff's exhortation and, and Matthew referred to John Bevere, uh, our Wednesday night meetings. It's been awesome. And uh, if you haven't been here, you miss something, and you're missing something. So you should try to clear your calendar and get here. But, 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 but I was thinking this. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth said, he said, when I preach, I want to either make them mad or glad. Well, <laughs> if the preaching don't make you mad or glad, I think you're something lacking. And I have a little bit of a word for you. If it always makes you glad and never mad, then something wrong there too. Hello? Because that means you're not being pruned. You're not being challenged. You need to be stirred up. And sometimes say, what? And then you examine yourself. Amen? Is that good? I knew it was good. I just didn't know if you knew it or not. <laughs> Amen. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Amen. Well, I'm not going to take very long because you, 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 you guys all preached something this morning. It was good stuff. Amen? Good stuff. So I'll take the last half of it. How's that? <laughs> Lord willing. <laughs> but we won't box God into two hours either. 10, 30, 11, 30, 12, 30, that'd be, wouldn't it? Oh, sure, I got an hour. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Father, we invite your presence to just continue with us. We receive the anointing so that you can say what you want, the way you want, and through whomever you want, let your grace be on us. Let your kingdom be established in us and around us and upon us so your will can be done in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. 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 We need to make a decision that everything we say and everything we do is, is acceptable in God's eyes. Amen. We need to be seriously checking ourselves to find out if we're being obedient, as has already been said this morning, and then to be obedient. And we, we, we want to make sure that, that we're not being clicheic. And by that I mean we want to know that we're not just going through the flow, but we're going because we know. Amen. All right, Father, I just ask that you would let there be effectiveness here this morning too, so that what we say and what we speak is effective because effectiveness we we don't do what you want so so we just believe for that too in Jesus name amen 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 the lord's been he's been dealing with me about that lately that he wants effectiveness in everything that is done for the kingdom and in his kingdom and I believe he's, he's, he's tweaking things to stir us up. Amen? I'm going to take off my coat. Um, sometimes it gets warm in this house, especially when you go up a foot and a half. Abraham was a Gentile who received the promise from God that all nations would be blessed through him and through his seed. We are headed into the Christmas season and Christmas is Christmas. <laughs> How do you describe Christmas? 
Technically, it's supposed to be a time when we celebrate the coming of that seed. The seed of God coming into the earth so the seed of God could come into you and me. I'll say that again. The seed of God, we're celebrating at Christmas, the seed of God coming into the earth so that God's seed could come into humanity as many as received him. And that seed in you produces God in you. And if we were to try to understand that, it would, it, 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 it would actually be above our reach. But we do know that the promise is ours and we can receive it without fully comprehending what has happened. Amen? Amen? So, how our lives, once, once, once he gets inside of us, should be about him. And God's working on us on a regular basis to see that happen. Paul said in Philippians 3.20, he said, he said, King James says our conversation, he said, but a good translation would be our citizenship, which which means because citizens converse with each other. <laughs> Our citizenship is in heaven. So don't get caught up too much with the earth. John Bunyan, who wrote Pilgrim's Progress, he said, don't drive your stakes too deep because we're moving in the morning. And that's a word for all the church today. Don't drive your stakes too deep in the earth because we're moving in the morning. We don't want everybody else to be gone and you've drove your stakes so deep you've got to get a back hole coming in to dig that stake up. To get your tent ready to go. And uh, hello, this here? This is your tent. You're living in this tent. I'm not talking about your house you bought or you're renting or whatever. This is your tent here. It's going to be folded. Stakes pulled up and we're leaving. So don't drive your fleshly stakes too deep so that you're hindered and hampered. Now, in Genesis 12 and 3, We've got the promise. God said to Abraham, he said, I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. Abraham was a Gentile. God called him and that was the beginning of the Jewish nation. I don't want to go in too deep into all that, but I want you to see something here this morning that we usually don't even bother to look at. And you don't hear it a lot. But I want you to hear it this morning. When God said to Abraham, I will bless them that bless you, that word from God to Abraham came down through the ages, it landed on the Jewish nation, and then it exploded in Jesus, and then it came into the church. Hello. The Jews are only getting part of it now. Listen closely. They're only getting part of it. They're getting the external thing because the blessing still holds. You send a Jew to Toronto, and he'll prosper. You bring one here to Cornerbrook, he'll start a business and prosper. 
the blessing. That's superficial. And if you get caught up too much in that, guess what you're doing? You're driving your stake too deep here. But if you don't accept and receive that and say, I receive that for the earthly and natural blessing, you're shortchanging yourself. Amen? I want you to follow closely because if you fall asleep, you don't catch this. You and I are in a much better position and situation today than any Jewish person in the world that doesn't know Jesus. Hello. You all awake? All right. So what God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, 3, he's saying about you. He said, I'm going to bless them that bless you. Put your name there. I'm going to curse them that curse you. You say, how, how can you say that, Pastor? That's for the Jews. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go to the New Testament and find out who we are. In Galatians chapter 3, get your Bible out because the Bible is the, is the philosophy that we go by. It's the, it's, it's the theology that we trust, not your ideas. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, and they'll probably put it on the street, the screen for you. All right? But we want to make sure the screen's not wrong, too. You know what I mean? Let me read verse 28. No, 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 let's start with verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. That's pretty good right there. But it gets better. Everybody say it gets better. And it gets better for me. Say that. You need to see that and grab a hold of this today so that we can step a little closer to what God's wanting for us in the earth and in eternity. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. God is not, he's not racial and he's not discriminating against gender. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now listen to verse 29. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Wow. Listen. Don't even think about trying to curse me because it'll be reversed. You get that? I mean, God said, I'm going to bless them that bless you. How many of you really believe that what we're talking about this morning is something we need to understand? It's not just the Jewish nation. It's those who are in Christ. Because, you see, Abraham was just a man. And when God called Abraham, he was looking way down the corridors of time and seeing the seed. His seed, the seed of God, planted into a virgin, the Virgin Mary. And God's seed showed up in the earth. And if you put curse on God, you have a problem on your hands. And actually the seed that was in Mary is in you. If you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Paul said to the, to the Romans, I won't go into all these scriptures, but he said, he said, he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is, 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 is not of the flesh, it's of the heart. Oh, glory to God. There's something here that I believe God is, 
yearning for his church to rise up and receive. Paul said, my prayer for the Jewish nation, my prayer for Israel, is that they come to know Christ. That's peace. You've heard me say it before. If all you're p- p- praying for is to keep the bombs from coming on, on Jerusalem and keep, keep the bombs from and, and missiles from, from coming into Israel, which we want to stop. Amen. We're, we want to see that stop in the name of Jesus because it doesn't belong. But if that's all we're praying for, if that's all we're praying for, we're praying so superficial it's not even funny. But we're praying that the peace that passes all understanding will come into the city of Jerusalem, into every Jew that inhabits Israel and any other part of the earth, and that that same peace that passes understanding will come into your life and into your house and into the church like we've never seen it before. I want the peace of God to come. I want the blessing of God to come. I want the glory of God to come. You see, See, you see, you've got to get out of you've got to get out of anything that is not fully and completely flowing with what Jesus did on the cross. When he went to the cross, he went to purchase a church with his own blood. He went to purchase a people with his own blood. And and that purchase is including every soul that says yes to the coming of the Messiah. John 1 and 12, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many has received him. Everybody say, but as many. I'm a part of the many. Amen, Robert? I'm a part of the many. As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. All glory to Jesus. Can you see what's coming together here? I'll bless them. That blesses the sons of God in the earth. Everybody say, that's me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) We we did the... uh, We did the uh, long-term care services this week. And and I I want to take you to the scriptures we used. There was a powerful anointing there when I shared these scriptures. I don't know if anybody... Raise your hand if you were there with me. There's, There's four or five. Did you sense that? Say amen out loud. Did you sense something? Yes, there was a there was a powerful anointing. Sometimes you can go and, and preach to a lot of people. You know, we had quite a, quite a crowd. The place is full in, in the long-term care center. And, and you can feel like the whole place is flat and everything is flat. But you could sense something about this. But let me... Let me oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I, I, I sense the presence of God in the house. And I want to go to Isaiah chapter, chapter 9 first. I want to go to Isaiah chapter 9 first. Have you got your Bibles? Isaiah Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. And verse 6 says this, For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Now go over to Luke chapter 1, verse 33. Luke chapter 1, verse 33. The angel is talking to Mary. Verse 32, let's read that first. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, of his kingdom, you are in his kingdom if you're in Christ. 
and of his kingdom there shall be no end. The same prophetic word that came from the prophet Isaiah is coming from the angel Gabriel as he speaks to Mary. And he's saying there is a kingdom being set up here. And the kingdom is God's kingdom. And Jesus Christ is going to be the king. And of his government, of his reign, there will be no end. You see, it don't matter whether it's Harper or Trudeau. They're going to have their end. It don't matter whether it's Bush or Obama. They're going to have their time and their end will come. And you can go all around the world and find any king, any president, any prime minister. And you'll find out that their tenure will end. Their time will end. Their time will be up. And they will pass off the scene and be forgotten. But of his kingdom and of his reign and his government, there will be no end. And it ought to make you excited. Your philosophy and your ideology and, 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 and your little, 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 little pipsqueak ideas of God don't mean nothing. What means something is what did God say about it? And he said the government, oh glory to God, the government's going to be on his shoulders. He's taken this thing all over. Every one of the governments in the earth now will come to naught. But his government, his reign will know no end. So why wouldn't you vote for Jesus? <laughs> Why wouldn't you just vote for Jesus? Come on. Think about it for a second. The church has, has, has spent it, so many wasted moments hashing out. You know, well, we believe this. We believe this. We believe something else. And this is what I think. And, and Matthew alluded to that earlier, I think. The great I am, when it's said and done, will still be I am. And his reign will never end. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what Christmas is all about. That's what the blessing is all about. Amen? And God, let me, let me, let me refer you to Um, in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, I don't have it, but if you want to put it on the screen, I don't have it in my notes. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts 20, 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. I have a responsibility Not to patronize anybody else's doctrine, but to please God. And I'm here to tell you this morning that when God said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless your seed, you can take that to the bank for you. Amen? I was praying this week and seeking the Lord and he drew me to the scripture. And do you know how much God loves Israel? And we do too. We, we stand with Israel. Everybody in agreement with that? I sure hope you are. But he said the church is missing something. They're missing something. 
They're, they're looking in the flesh. When he said, I purchased a church that would be moving in the Spirit. And I've always had problems with my people Israel when they would not move in the Spirit. But they got caught up in the natural, in the flesh. And that is what shortchanged them when it came to the blessing. To bring them into my everlasting kingdom. And I'm drawing them to myself. I'm working on getting them back to where they belong. But you have received Christ who shed His blood to bring the church into fruition so that it can come into my presence. And you have been overlooking that my blessing is for you. You have been shortchanging yourself because when somebody blesses you, Are you seeing this? No, I, I, are you getting this? Come on, I want you to get it. Are you getting this? Who are you? Are you a son of God or are you just like this poor little pauper that is trying to make his way through church life? We need to make our minds up who we are. Are you sons of God? Bought with his own blood. Purchased with the blood that was shed on the cross. The moment you say I received Jesus Christ into my life. You become sons and daughters of God. And God's blessing just is, is emanating towards you. And people of the world who don't even know God. When they bless you. They invite Blessing. You see, the blessing that, that pertained to the natural man is on you. It came to Israel. But God said it comes right through to his initial purpose. When, 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 when Israel was slaying bulls and goats on the altar and blood was running through the years... Every drop of blood that ran off a Jewish altar was pointing to the blood that would be shed on Calvary. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. It was pointing to Jesus, the sacrificial lamb. The ultimate Jew who died for you. And when... When you receive him, Paul said he's not ashamed to call you brethren. I hope there's no Jew haters here this morning because if you're born again in the spirit realm, you are a Jew. I need to go read that. I need to go read it. I don't have it in my notes, but it's in the Bible. Somebody shout amen. 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 Book of Romans. I will clean you out sometime. I'm talking to my Bible. Chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Verse 29. Write this down and read it for yourself sometime. Just mull over it and smile. Look at this. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Everybody say inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. You see, I quoted this just now, but I want to read it because sometimes you might think I'm missing something. So I want to get it from the book. And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. 
Amen? Now, if you put this together, every time you're blessed by somebody, you ought to, you ought to get yourself in agreement with the word and return the blessing to them just like God's word tells us. Because he said, I will bless them that bless you. The psalmist was quoting what God had spoken over Israel, and he said, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. So God wants that you be protected and nobody touch you to harm you. Just as when they were traveling from place to place, and there were those who would not receive the Israelites, and not even let them pass through their country. Not even let them pass. I mean, they asked politely quite a, a couple of times or so, can we just pass through? And we'll even pay you for, for, for the water we use. We'll pay you for everything. And, and no, they wouldn't let them go through. Now, they thought they were, they were getting off with something, but you'll find out that down the road, God said, now go back and deal with that bunch. Because they didn't bless you. They cursed you. This is in the natural realm. And the curse that they imposed on Israel came right back to them. Judgment. Today, we're in the same thing, only it's in the spiritual realm. And where the powers of hell are using people and situations and whatever against the church today, we need to understand you don't have to worry about a thing. Jesus said in, in John 16, he said, the time will come when they will put you out of the synagogue and, and, and he that killeth you will think he doeth God a favor. There's a lot of persecution, a lot of challenge come to the church today, but the church needs to understand you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, even if you have to give your life, don't worry about it because there's something bigger, brighter, and greater in store. And God's going to take care of it. I don't want to be on, on the giving hand of judgment and challenge against the church. You don't ever want to be involved with anybody who speaks against the body of Christ. No more than you want to be against those who speak against Israel. I got, a better, I got more sense. My brother-in-law, he says... <laughs> Talking about situations, whatever, we won't go into that, but Brother Wilford, he said, he said, I got a degree in CS. I said, Wilford, what is that? He said, common sense. You know, Christians need a little, just a little taste of common sense, and you won't speak against Israel. Read the Bible. Because God's not finished with Israel. Read the Bible. And understand that. But read it all and you'll find out that he who speaks against you is imposing a curse on himself. He who blesses you is bringing blessing on himself. How many of you understand and believe that what I'm talking to you this morning is the word of the Lord? Raise your hand and wave it at me so I know you're getting this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm blessed, and I know that I am since Jesus got a hold of my life. I'm blessed, and I know that I am because he promised me a new life. How many of you remember that old chorus? Tell me you do for sure, don't you? You do. Before I was born. How did I get that? I know. I might have had it mixed up, but it's true. Are you blessed today? Yes. Don't ever be afraid when somebody blesses you to smile and say, God bless you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I receive Genesis 12 and 3 for me. Because it was prophesied and spoken to Abraham. And Abraham's blessings are mine. One more scripture in Galatians, if you don't mind. Do you love the Lord? Do you mind if I take a couple more minutes? Okay, Galatians 3.13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The curse came on Jesus. But listen, it goes on. That the blessing, everybody say the blessing. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Write it down. Pray over it. Study it. And most of all say, Lord, I receive that. The blessing of Abraham. What was the blessing of Abraham? I mean, we're not going to go into all the details, but Genesis 12 and 3 begins this blessing. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to bless them that bless you. They're going to want to bless you because blessing comes back. And he said, I'll curse them that curse you. They're going to want to keep their hands off of you because they know it's not a good thing. He also said to him, you will possess the gate of your enemies. Blessing. Blessed going in and coming out. Made the head and not the tail. Caused to be above only and not beneath. Your enemy will come at you one way and flee seven ways. I'll bless your storehouse and your basket. That means your bank accounts. Because you don't keep everything in a basket or a storehouse in your house anymore. But now if you are putting your money in your mattress, God will bless that if you believe Him for it. Not real wise thing but hey the blessing of Abraham the blessing of the Lord belongs to us but we've been working so hard to get the blessing of the world we forgot that God said in blessing I will bless you oh hallelujah how many blessed people we got here this morning How much time have I got left? Oh, it's only 12.09. That's beautiful. The Lord is redeeming my time even this morning. I'm being blessed here. The devil don't know what to do about it because we're blessed. He don't understand that. He don't know. He'll attack your stuff. He'll try to take away everything you've gotten. And he'll attack your family and he'll attack your extended family and try to make you say, oh, well, I guess I'm not blessed. But you need to get your weapons together. Remember Abraham got his 300 soldiers that was trained in his house and went and got back all the stuff. Some of you read your Bible, you know about that. It looked bad, but he got it back. Every bit of it and some. David, it looked bad. I mean, everybody wanted to stone the guy because everything was gone wrong. Their wives and their, their, their families and their stuff was gone. 
but he encouraged himself in the Lord. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And he stirred himself up and reminded himself about the blessing of Abraham. He reminded himself that he was, he was anointed. He reminded himself that God is on his side. He reminded himself that it was only the anointing that could bring down the giant, kill the lion, and kill the bear. He reminded himself that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. He reminded himself that if he trusted in the Lord, the Lord would vindicate him and give him the victory. He reminded himself that he had been promised a kingdom and God was not finished with him yet. Glory to God. Listen, when hell comes in, and everybody tells you around you. And everybody's given up on you. And you just don't know which way to turn because it looks like I'm finished here. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord and remind yourself that God has made a promise. And if you'll just grab a hold of that promise by faith and smile in the face of adversity and run right in the midst of the battle, God will help you and deliver you and provide for you. And He will crush the enemy underneath your feet. Feet. You're blessed if you can retain that truth. And even through the tears, even through the pain, even through the discomfort that hell pushes against you, if you can whisper his name and make declaration that I believe God. I'm telling you, there may not even be a light at the end of the tunnel, but if you look to Jesus, He'll be that light. There may not be any door or window that you, you see for escape, but He said, I am the door. Everything is under control. If you keep your eyes on Him, you're blessed. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're blessed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you see it? Can you see it? Stop looking at, at, at the nation of Israel and separating them from you. Because God started the thing with them and He's concluding it with you and He's going to bring them on board with you. He's bringing all things together in one. Read it in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. You get that? Listen, saints. I'm stirring you up this morning for truth. We're not going to be joined with Israel. Israel is going to be joined with us. Do you know why? Because us are in. I need to hear that. Us are in. Us are in. Where are we? Where are we? Where do they need to come? So don't go looking at them as if they're more blessed than you. No, you're more blessed than them. And we're praying that they'll come into where we are and be blessed with us. Shout amen. amen. Is that good? Praise God. I preach myself more happy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. What Jesus has done for you and for me can't be added to. I speak to those right now who've been challenged by John Bevere's book. And, I, and I've had the opportunity to, to, to be in conversation with you all pretty much. But I speak to you now. What Jesus has done for you cannot be added to. He's made you accepted in the beloved. And the message coming out of good or God is this. Get it. Listen closely and get it. The message coming out of good or God is this. You've been accepted in the beloved. You are accepted before God. He sees you sinless. Now, while you're walking in this Tent, this flesh, walk it so that the devil can't bring condemnation on you and rob you of your faith and your blessing 
in the earth. Meditate on that. Selah. Everybody say this. I am the righteousness of Christ. He sees me as if I'd never sinned. My responsibility is to begin to walk in the Word by the Spirit so that I can please Him in my everyday life. If I fail, grace is bigger than all of my failures. Grace is greater than all of my sin. So I can begin again. See that? Oh, it's so wonderful. If you can only see it the way that God has planned it. You lie down when you go to bed at night and smile. And your smile is saying, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because everything is perfect in your spirit, man. And he's working on you so that your, your words, your actions, your thoughts, your reactions all begin to line up with what God wants in your life. And he's going to keep working on you so that next week, next month, next year, you're better than you were before. He's going to keep working on us. Because you see, he wants you in the spot. Please listen closely. He wants you in the spot so that the blessings can come and you don't feel condemned inside you because of your walk failure. Because when you fail in your walk every day, God is not condemning you. He died for you through Christ. He died. But condemnation comes in. Your heart condemns you when you begin to walk wrong. But if you walk right, you get this feeling inside that there's an acceptance of your walk, just like there's an acceptance of your spirit man that has been redeemed through the blood. See, God cannot put his approval and blessing on my walk if I'm committing adultery. He still loves me, and he's believing for me to wake up and smell the roses and say, oh, repent. Sorry, Lord. Sorry, you know, the spouse or or, or the wife or husband. Sorry, repent and change your walk, and God will bring you right back. He cannot put his blessing on my walk if I'm going in the store and I've got my my handbag. I'm a woman. (laughs) And I've got my big handbag, and, you know, nobody's looking. There's no camera. I can slip this into my, my purse here. Besides, they're charging too much for their grocers anyway. Do you know how many times that has happened? And I've heard of Christians who've done this. They justify themselves and say, well, you know, they, they charge too much for grocers. I mean, I'm paying for it when I pay for the other stuff. And they put it in their bag and they walk out with a few things, a few measly, stupid, dumb little things that destroys their integrity and brings condemnation in their heart. So they cannot believe God. They cannot trust God. They can't lie down at night and be totally convinced that God is on their side because they've been walking wrong. And the list can go on. Amen. So let's practice walking to please him because he fixed your spirit man so that he sees you without sin. He wants to see this hump of flesh you're walking in. He wants to see this tent walking so that the world looks and says, I see something there that makes me feel like I want to be right, to do right, to walk right. How many of you can see what I'm talking about? Amen. So I'm closing early right now. God said, I'll bless you just because other people bless you. And if they curse you, they're going to be in trouble. That's your promise. 
He said, and I got to close this because I've got a lot more notes I could went with. But he said, he said, you'll possess the gates of your enemies. I could preach for another hour on this stuff because it's so good. When Abraham's coming home from the, the slaughter of the kings where he, he went in and possessed his stuff, and he's bringing back, you know, he, the guy's got everything. And he meets Melchizedek on the road. Now, this is before the law. This is before the law was ever instigated. This is Genesis. The law is not instigated until in Exodus. It's way down the road, way down the road. But somehow, while he's walking along the road and he encounters some believe to be the pre-incarnate Christ, I don't know, but he was without mother and without father, no end, no beginning, this Melchizedek. The Bible says that Abraham gave him tithes of all. So, just a word of encouragement this morning. When we're talking about the blessing of God, we step beyond trivialities. We step beyond tedious little, you know, well, do I this, do I do that? If he is your source, and if you see him, oh, glory to God. There's something about remembering who he revealed himself. If you see him as the possessor of heaven and earth, to tie to him and to sow into his kingdom through the ways that he makes available today in whatever way that is. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. And Abraham gave him tithes of all. When you see him that way as the possessor of heaven and earth, then it just happens. You step from Abraham and you go down to Isaac and then you go to Jacob. And uh, Jacob ran away because he cheated his brother, stole his birthright. I had to be careful because I can get into some preaching material here. But here he is on a lonely hill. He's got a stone for a pillow and he has a vision and God shows him his greatness and he shows him angels coming back and forth up and down this ladder, I believe exemplifying the fact that the blessing of God is available to you. Heaven's blessing coming to earth. And the Bible says that Abraham said, this is none other than the house of God. Oh, he said, this is awesome. And he said, from this moment on, of everything that you give me, everything that comes into my hand, I will give you the tithe. Where did he get that? This is before the law. He got it from God Almighty. I really don't care what you do or don't do with your money. If you don't want to tie and you don't want to give into the church, go buy some Kentucky Fried Chicken. Because if your heart's not right when you are sowing and tithing, you're just as well off, and at least your body might get some good from the chicken. Not too much, but some, some good. Do you understand that? Because God, the possessor of heaven and earth, will sustain the church. Wherever God is established somewhere, he's going to make a way for provision. The problem is when I am afraid and intimidated by finances and intimidated by, by, by junk around me and I can't tithe, I have not seen him for who he is. He said, why are you preaching this? Because it come to my spirit. It wasn't planned. It's not in my notes. I try to be obedient. And I believe what I'm saying needs to be heard by at least one person in this house this morning. 
But when you see him, when you get a revelation of him who delivers you, who provides for you, who holds your breath in his very hand and gave you the life you have and will give you eternity without any calculation of the blessings. When you see that, tithing will be such a trivial matter to you. Anybody here see that? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. My God and my King. Hallelujah. I wish I had another hour. Because I'm getting more blessed preaching than you are receiving. I guarantee you that right now. I can guarantee you that, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Soon. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. How real is he to you this morning? How real is the experience you have to you? What would it take for you to be knocked off your horse? What would it, be, would it take for you to be derailed? What would the devil need to bring along for you to lose your joy? Huh? What would he have to do to rob you of this joy unspeakable that's full of glory? You need to be able to answer that. Because the devil will come with everything he's got at some point in your life. And hope that with this final thrust, it can put you down. I have a suggestion. If you haven't already, die now. And you can't kill a dead man. You can't offend the dead man. You can't make a, a dead man lose his joy because you take something away from him. And if you die today, make sure that that old man is dead. You'll retain your joy. And the door for blessing will stay open until Jesus comes. Then you'll move into a bigger door of greater blessing forever. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning that these crude words of exhortation will find their mark and be effective to bring glory to your name because it's only you who are worthy of praise, honor, and glory. And we desire in Jesus' name that you would help us see more of who Jesus is. And understand that what has been done for us was the ultimate price. A miracle couldn't do it. And you're God of miracles. But it took the blood, your own blood, to bring us into this thing. This place of blessing. And we ask you that you help us never to take our eyes off the blessing that is available only in Christ. Only in Christ. So that the whole earth is drawn to him. We believe for that and we thank you for it. In Jesus' great name.